So I'll launch the application, and it does launch, that's good. <laughs> And we'll go ahead and start up. Now, the first thing you're going to see when you get into Smoke is that it's got this brand new UI. I'll give you a quick tour of that. It's still an early version of the product. A few little things here. No worries. License expires. We'll deal with that. <laughs> here we go. All right. So right away, this should look like a familiar home base for anybody that knows how to edit. So I can move quickly through this. This is actually a project that we're going to be using at the show floor, and I'm just giving you a quick overview demo. Uh, but once you get to the NAD show floor, we've got smoke everywhere. If you want to see smoke, you can see it up close and personal. And this is from our friends at Oakley. They've been using smoke for a while. Get that! It's a promo for the uh, golfer Rory McElroy. That's a mouthful to say, but great looking piece. Of course, they sourced it and shot it on red. And I've got the timeline with a few holes in it. I haven't really finished the edit. I've got some effects and stuff I want to show you here. Now, let me go back to my standard tool view here, and I just want to give you an idea of how the timeline works. What I love about this interface is I can start making adjustments, move around. It's very dynamic as I move through different things. I can, of course, you know, adjust and see all of my information here. If I want to go into the media hub, I just tap down here, and I'm into my media browser. But let me stick to the timeline, because this is the fun part. Just got a couple shots here that I want to change the order of. So the first thing you'll see is we've added really logical ways to work, icon-based things, things that people can figure out exactly what these icons do. I just want to do a quick ripple edit here because I've got three shots and I want to change the order. I want this barbell shot to come after this. This is actually a treadmill. It took me a minute to figure that out too. So what I'm going to do is just pick it up. I've got ripple on, hold alt, drop it into place. Really simple. If I want to do some editing here, I can play through. I can mark an endpoint, an out point. Standard editorial conventions and workflow. If I want to, for example, drag and drop this down, I'll just open up a, a folder where I've got some uh, shots prepped. Just grab a couple, drag and drop it in. You can see Smoke's going to tell me exactly where that media is going to go. I can see on-screen indicators of where everything's going to drop. Drop it in, and then I can start trimming here. Maybe I'll just grab these and add a fade. Standard stuff, right? Now, if you're looking at this thing, what's the big deal? I know how to edit. That's exactly the point I'm trying to make with this section. Smoke's UI is really designed for people who can already do this stuff. So, once you get past that, what are you going to do with Smoke? Well, this is where you're going to start moving into some of the effects tools that we have here. So let me come down. I'm going to do two things. I've just got two quick examples for you. First one is some color correction. So let's just go to this section. And I've picked a shot that I know needs a bit of correction. This one right there. And it's actually bracketed by two shots that look pretty good. So it's kind of the classic problem. You can see it's actually been resized in from a, a 2K red file. So what I'm going to do is start working with it. Now, how do I add an effect? Well, I just right-click on it, and I go to Add Effect, okay? So now I'm inside my effects ribbon here, right from the timeline. I'll just select a color corrector. And if I'm just doing something basic, I have some controls here. So I could do the, the typical demo ugly color correction and see that play back with green. But we, we need to do something a little bit better than that. But let me go back into my Edit View. And what I'll do is I'll show you how I can go into the editor just by double-clicking on it. And here I have different ways of working. This is actually a fairly high-res shot, so I'm just going to go to the full-screen mode here. You can see we have our UI that kind of gets out of the way as you're working with things. I'm going to reset that one. I can even move to the color warper. This is a really sophisticated way to, to do color correction. You can see it's got a familiar interface, shadows, midtones, highlights done as a trackball. If I had uh, an Avid Artist Series panel, I could use that, for example. And what I want to start doing is some matching with this. I want to match it to those other shots. So what we've done is we've tried to make moving through the UI really easy and intuitive. So I want to reference these shots on either side. So to get to any other view here, I just swipe to the side and I get this nice little pop-up window. So what I'm going to do is go to a triptych player. Now, it may not be obvious what this is showing you, so let me zoom out. What I want to see is, in this case, the previous and the next shot, the incoming and the outgoing shots. I could also set it back to a free mode, and if I want to adjust these or put them in specific places, I can navigate around, I can do all of that. Let's just play that one in. So I can even play in these, right? Okay, so now we want to do our color correction. So now when I step back into the editor, I can get to that same mode in here. So the first thing I want to do is work on these two shots, because I'm going to match this shot to that one. So these dynamic viewers are really nice. I can just kind of slide that guy out of the way, balance this up a little bit. And I'll start doing the first thing that comes to mind, which is a color match. So I'll just grab this guy here. Let's grab this guy over here. Doesn't work. Changes all of the image. Okay? So let's just undo that. Or in this case, I'll just reset it. Let's zoom in. 
There we go. So I'm going to use one of the selectives in here. So you have selective color correction built right here into the UI. So I grab that. I don't know if you can see it up there, but it's turned his shirt a little bit blue too. This is just a view that indicates the selection. If I, I go into the mat, you can see it did a pretty good job, but it's actually got some garbage in there because of the color. Maybe I want to sample a little bit more of the, uh, of the background out there. And what I want to do is maybe work on that softness there. So we'll just soften in a little bit that way. I'm not going to worry about getting all this out. We're trying to color correct, not necessarily chroma key him out. But that's enough with some softness that when I come back to my result, I'm changing just the sky there, okay? So now when we do things like, let's just undo that. Well, he's pressing undo. For those journalists who think that any other company could have news this good, <laughs> <laughs> the bus is outside. And for those who want to stay, obviously we have a lot more to go. We have yeah, you can't leave yet. I haven't even to speak. So just for those journalists who are expecting to get on a bus and go to Aria, the bus is here. I want to courteously tell you. And you guys can see what I was doing while Rama was interrupting me so rudely. I was able to come in and uh, start working there to do that color correction. But what I love about working here, it's really fast. I've got multiple selective color corrections. Um, so I can go in and just, for example, grab his skin tone there and go back to my result. And now I can start trying to do a color match with something like this area to over here. And these were shot on different days, so let's see what kind of results we get. So it's actually pretty good. I could even go back to the master here, and I can see a little bit of green in his hat that I don't know if you're picking up there. And I can start kind of walking that off to just really start to, to clean that up and tweak it. So now when I come back out, let's switch back to our player view so I can go to a basically what's a one-up view and play that down. And it's doing okay. I'm gonna go ahead and render it, but before I do, you know, I don't actually like what's happening here on the other side. So let's move this over, let's move this over. Still gotta get used to uh, all the new UI here. Let's move this over here, sorry, this over here. And zoom that back. Now I'm all out of place, hold on. There we go. Because what I want to do is show you that I can actually color correct between uh, multiples here. Uh, I got all flustered by everybody leaving to go to that other event. <laughs> um, so, so here's this shot. So watch this from this effects pipeline. So as I add effects, they just kind of show up in this logical order, and I can grab them, drag and drop one or multiple effects to different shots in my timeline here. Now, what's cool here is when I go into this one, let's just make this a little bigger. The color correction doesn't exactly work because it's kind of a different shot, but these are all adjustable. So all I have to do is go back into my master here, select this side, change the tolerance for that by picking the custom color right off the sky there. So just a really fast and flexible way to work here. Let's go back to just our, our two-up view. And what I'll also show you is just really quickly, I can always come in, go to a, a different layer, and these are, these are gap effects. They're essentially like an adjustment layer. So I can even start adding effects here. So I have a great way to quickly add things to my edit. I can start darkening that down. Maybe I want to add a wipe and do a garbage mask and track that in to do very specific color correction. So as I said, I just have a little bit of time to preview that. And I'll just go down here and show you the speed on this if I process those color corrections that look good. It's taking about five or six seconds to do those 64 frames. So again, all about really good performance, really fast, really interactive, letting you iterate creatively, figure out what it is you want to do, get your stuff to look good. But that's just a simple color correction example.